What's up, YouTube? Cards with Michael here with another box break today. Some pre release kits. One, two, three. Some sponsors. Blissful Bash sponsored two of these openings. Go check him out. He has a YouTube. He's just getting started. He might need your help with a little comment, a little like, but I'm sure he'll do well. He's going to keep getting better. And uh, yeah, go check him out. Let him know. Cards with Michael sent you. All right. And also, Fasty with another box. And, uh, Let's get to work. Is that a little bit more fun than opening uh, booster boxes? That's for sure. I know it's only six packs, but uh, it's cool. You know, it's nice getting that little, that little. Uh, oh, let's start with the. Oh, of course. Oh, by the way, first two for Blissful Bash. Hey, a little nice little triome. I'll keep it in this little thing. A little dice, of course, and uh, hey, some stuffs. All right, shove these back in. Let's see what we open. All right, pack one. Yeah, okay. Let's see. We've opened a triumph already. And uh, now we're looking through our cards. Uh, what would I take? Pack one, pick one here. Definitely not this little thing. Um, hmm. Hmm. Well, let's look at the rare first. Wander's Enclave. This is kind of a freebie, but it doesn't really do anything if you don't have a creature with power four or greater. Uh, I think it's still pretty good. Let's look at the next one. Polywog Symbiote. Not bad. Heartless Act. Not bad at, at, at all. Not bad at all. Mystic Subduel. Pretty good. Uh, you know, in the blind, I'd probably take that black removal spell. Uh, just because it can be very efficient. But it also just, you know, it whiffs on so many creatures in this format. Uh, but yeah, I'd probably still take this. If this uh, wasn't in the pack, probably the Bonders Enclave. And uh, otherwise, you know, you probably already have colors. So, you know, Mystic Subduel. Essence Scatter are both strong. Greater Sandworm is not bad. And uh, if I were at all in red, I really like uh, Blister Spit Gremlin. So pretty, pretty like average pack. So it's a little hard to really have a real good pack one, pick one. All right. Let's go through this pack. And uh, well, that's a pretty easy one. I think you've gone through the Wellsprings. Nice, just a nice early card to pick because it's not too hard to fulfill its companion uh, requirements. One of the easier ones. And uh, otherwise... Pack one, pick two. That's not in the pack. Probably this Dreamtail Heron. Uh, just the way they, they that that they play, I find them really powerful. So pretty easy to you know get that initial card. And this is one of the reasons why I think Heron's so good. Thieving Otter. I probably have talked about that interaction before, but I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Uh, this pack, uh, Zenaflare, would definitely be the pick if it was my pack one, pick one. Just you know that that format's so powerful, right? Uh, Mythos of the Luna isn't terrible. Um, really like that's all i can say about it and all the mentors are pretty good so easy pick one pick two pick three and here we go next pack all right okay all right these commons are are, are okay um if i can at all play quartzwood crasher i'd definitely take that pack one pick one uh but otherwise uh let's see mm, probably the mentor once again, I think the mentors are are in draft, especially like this one. Like if you're behind, you you know put a lifelink counter on some type of you know creature you have, and get in a little damage, gain a little life, especially if it has flying, and then you start threatening to make it huge. So I'm a fan. I am a fan. Okay, next pack. All right, Let's see how it goes. Oh, look, there's a a Vivian. Wow. Uh, I definitely take that pack one, pick one. I, I take it no matter what card is in the pack. But you know, just go through the rest in case Vivian's on here. The Heron is probably what I take, um, or maybe this Parcel Beast. Uh, I like the Heron a little bit more, just a little bit more flexible early on. <laughs> wow, what a great open! What a great open! All right, last pack for Blissful Bash. Well, last pack of this box. He did sponsor two of these kits, so all right. All right, here we go. Uh, Close Thunder Recluse and a Winona double mythic kit. Wow, these kits have been great. I'd probably take the Winona just because it's a mythic at this point. It has some value. <laughs> um, Close Thunder Recluse, still pretty solid, of course. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, probably the Glow Thunder Recluse or the Heron are the... Maybe I overvalue Heron, but I have had a really good time with Heron. It really rewards you for drafting like um, non-humans that are cheap. 
Um, just because that cantrip effect is so nice. And it's a 3-4 flyer. Like, it's not, it's, not, it's not asking for you to do too much, right? It's asking you to play a creature before turn 4. Um, and then you mutate onto it. So, yeah. It's really not that bad. All right. Kit number 2. Let's see. Let's see. Let's put that to the side. Hey! A Chevelle Bane of Monsters Mythic? Wow. What a great... What a great one. What a great one. Not a bad one at all. Love it. Love it so much. All right. Let's uh, let's put this guy back in. And let's start opening packs. Okay, here we go. None of these stand out too much. Oh, a Runus Ultimatum. All right. I'd probably take a Runus Ultimatum here. Pack one, pick one. Uh, it has highly, it has a lot of potential, right? Destroy all non-land permanent or opponent's control. That's just like destroy everything, right? Uh, so, uh, otherwise, if it's not in the pack, um, honestly, maybe like the Splendor Mare, just because it's flexible. Um, it, and it's a creature with cycling, which is like not bad. Or the Stinger, if I really want to go deep into that. Both of these have cycling, but the, the Stinger is better because it only costs one mana to cycle. Though the Mare does have that ability. So like both of them are pretty good. Um, maybe the mayor, uh, but otherwise, besides the ruinous ultimatum, the rest of the pack was a little bit uh, weak, to put it lightly. Uh, oh, okay. So another singer, um, another heron, of course, and inspired ultimatum. Same thing. I probably grabbed the inspired ultimatum. Pack one, pick one. I'm a big fan of just going that you know four color, five color, non monstrosity nonsense. Uh, a lot of like these tap lands. And, uh, you know, really trying to get there type of deck. So just how I roll, just how I roll, especially with this format. It's just more rewarding for me. That's that, that's all I can say. It's more, it's just more fun. Like, you know, really channeling my inner channeling. <laughs> right when I said the word. And a Coggle of Titanate. Definitely take this. This is one color. Easy, easy value. Look at that. Right when it comes to play, it fights one creature you don't control. When it attacks, it, you basically can disenchant. And you can return a human you control to give it indestructible, which sometimes uh, is not even a downside. Like you can return, I don't know, a drain of Singer and then cycle it when the Singer no longer does anything. I.e. your opponent has creatures that are bigger than it. I don't know. There's just there's a lot of potential. A lot of potential with that card. It's limited, of course. And here we go. Neutralize, Splendor Mare, Incestual Human Phage, and ah yeah, you're on Sky Nomad. Super happy to pack one, pick one this too. I mean, most of the rares in the set have been pretty good. Um, if that's not in the pack, honestly, I don't know. Deadweight, Heron. Um, God, that's a lot of Herons. We, we've seen like a Heron now. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Definitely the, the Farfinder. This early on um, just keeps you open. You, you know you're going to play it. Um, gives you that value. It's a body. It's a, it's, a, it's a mutate target. The Heron is definitely what I would take. Or Sorry, the Farfinder is definitely what I would take if the, the rare wasn't in that pack. I'm big on it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can pick up a lot. Easy. But uh, I like them. They help me do... What I want to do, help me live my dreams out. World one of thoughts. This is not something I'd actually pack one, pick one. Obviously, it's not very good and limited. Uh, of course, there's another stinger. Uh, what else would I take here? Honestly, probably the stinger. The Sterics is like okay. It's definitely one of the weaker uh, green mutate cards. Uh, just because you know you exile the top card of your deck, it's a land. You put the land in play. Your opponent kills your dude, and you're like, okay, well, that's so sad. Omnius Seas is okay. Uh, yeah, this pack is pretty weak, I would say. I'd say the Stinger just kind of stands up. Just because that archetype is so good. Like, you Xenoflare them for 8 or 9. You Lord Dracus the Xenoflare back. Your opponent just concedes. Like, what are they going to do? All right. All right, here we go. Last pack. Boon of the Wishgiver. Solid. Garuda! Dumo Depths. Yeah, I take that first pick for sure. I mean, this card's just so solid. Like, you can play this... Um, without a companion and not feel bad at all like not at all so yeah great 12 packs two pre-release kits i put these to the side blissful bash thanks for sponsoring again and uh hit them up hit them up link everything will be in the description below this last kit for fasty for fasty man these kits have been a little bit better than than uh than i imagined i mean we uh saw that vivian earlier all right what is the oh a shark typhoon Super nice pre-release card. Okay, great. Oh, whoa, 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 camera. And we got six packs. Interesting. All of these have been red dice. Have you noticed that? Red dice, red dice, and another red dice. Anyways, just wanted to point that out. 
All right, Fasty, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Six packs. Pack one. All right, here we go. Here we go. Okay. All right, Sanctuary Smasher. I think it's a pretty solid card. Bonyard Lurker, very, very solid as well. And Unpredictable Cyclone. It's okay. Uh, not something I would be excited to pack one, pick one. Um, probably more excited to take either the, the Lurker or the Smasher. Uh, otherwise, yeah, those kind of the, are the only cards that really stand out. The Smasher is just nice. I mean, First Strike oftentimes can be um, a big blowout. Uh, and the fact that it's cycling means you can do it instant speed and you draw a card. So, and Lurker can be, uh, technically it can be only one of those colors, but obviously you, you want to be able to cast it there. Um, but it just gives you that value, you know? It's kind of like a uh, Grave Digger. It's obviously, it's obviously not as good, but it's stats-wise a little bit better. Um, and you can keep Grave Diggering it multiple times, right? If you mutate onto that stack again. So plays, plays pretty nicely. Plays pretty nicely. All right. Nothing too exciting. Nothing too exciting. Classification. Uh, I don't know. I've never drafted this card yet, so you guys will have to give me some feedback on that. Uh, but I think I would probably just take Blade, Blade Banish here. Um, pack one, pick one. Uh, just because, you know, it's it's really hard for me to see this this working out in this limited format because of that tap enchanted creature. Um, if you have plenty of creatures with Trample, maybe, and your opponent doesn't have that much removal, uh, I could see it definitely doing work. Mm, but uh, I'm not too keen. I'm not too keen on it. It does cost a million mana as well. So, All right, next pack. And what do we have here? Quartzoid Crasher. All right. Speaking of things that have Trample, uh, <laughs> probably take that. Uh, it's pretty solid. Uh, these uncommons are okay. I mean, I don't know what I would take. I guess Stinger, of course. Pack one, pick two. Um, Rumbling Rock Slide's not bad. I guess, you know, obviously it always depends on what colors you are, but uh, the Crasher's not terrible. Crasher is not terrible. All right, three more packs. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Good start, good start. Saving on it. Okay. And let's see. What, what else are we at in here? Splendor Mare. Oh, a Genesis Ultimatum. Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, I don't really like Genesis Ultimatum because it doesn't really do anything by itself. It like counts on you having other cards that are good in your deck. Um, and at a certain point, you just draft those other cards. You know what I mean? Um, nothing that really excites me. Obviously, I, I've, I've overlooked a couple of these Reptilian Reflections. They're actually pretty good. Um, like, it doesn't take a lot to make them work. Uh, three mana for a 5-4 when you have a lot of cycling is not terrible. And they technically do have haste, so... Um, if you top deck one while you still have cycling, you can, you know, and you have two in play, and you have another one in play, you can really, you know, kill your opponent out of nowhere. So, not terrible at all. Not terrible at all. All right. All right. Two more packs. Two more packs. Here we go. Oh, the Ozolith and a foil heightened reflexes. All right. I, I don't know if the Ozolith is that good um, in limited. Definitely, obviously, a sweet card for EDH and other formats, but, uh, you know, Pioneer Modern, of course, is the counters deck. But uh, let's see. What else? What else would I take? Wow, there's really nothing nothing too exciting. Flame Spool is obviously pretty solid. Um, that's probably it. That's the only card I'd be like, kind of stands out the most in this pack. Yeah. All right. Not bad. Not bad. All right. One more pack. One more pack. Where's the Mythic? I don't think we hit a Mythic so far. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. All right. Okay. Titan Titanoth Rex. Frill Scare. Huh? Frill? So yeah. Frill Scare Mentor. Escape Protocol. An Everquill Phoenix. And a Swamp. Uh, probably take the Phoenix. Phoenix is just pretty solid. Four mana for a 4 4 flyer. Without any of that mutate text, is already pretty good. Obviously, the moment you mutate it once, you now can threaten bringing this back into play. So, definitely an easy pick there. Pack one, pick two. Definitely this brush wag. Look at that. Look at the brush wag. I mean, everyone thought this was going to be a meme, but, uh, you know, if you've played it out, mutating onto this guy is awesome because you definitely will upgrade. You're not going to keep his 1-1 stats, but you still keep this uh, activated ability, which is pretty sweet activated ability, if you ask me. Yeah, just looking at the rest, probably def definitely that. And uh, I do like the mentors, of course, but, uh, you know, it's nice to also just have a playable, solid, cheap creature. Okay, those are the three kits. Thank you, guys. What's the bash? Fasty for sponsoring, and uh, see you guys in the next video.